Hey, so are you looking to set up your FreshBooks accounting software easily and with very little time? Well, stay tuned because I have five tips to help you set up your FreshBooks accounting software from scratch. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. Um, the best thing you can do when listening to this video, if you can sit down and actually open FreshBooks, then you and I can do this work together. But if you don't have time right now, then you can just jot the five tips down if that's better for you. So the very first thing that you wanna do once you actually have FreshBooks set up is you're gonna get a want, you're going to want to go to your settings area. So that's gonna be right here, settings and then you're gonna select settings again. And there's really just two things that you want to go in and go ahead and set up. The first thing is gonna be going into your business area. You're gonna to want to add the name of your business. Um, you're gonna to wanna to add any phone numbers that you have for your business and also your those types of your business information. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the logo, and you want to go ahead and select a logo for your business, and just put that in there. Now, what you'll notice here is you can also select a theme color, and you don't have to use the theme colors that are in FreshBooks. What you can do is select a custom color if you have a custom brand color or something like that that you can use, as I'm showing you here in this example. I've entered a hex code um, instead of using these colors colors that show up in FreshBooks. Again, not really one of the five tips, just an extra tip, but if you find that you want to go ahead and have your logo, if you want to have a certain color show up on your invoices, that's what this is for, is it's really for all of your sales documents and things like that, that you'll have this branding with your color on there. The other thing that you'll want to do is go ahead and click on your email notifications. Now what you're looking at right now is the way that FreshBooks has the notification set up. These are just the default notifications. But I wanna walk you through what these notifications are so that you can just look at these one time and say yes or no to these. You're gonna be right now you're going to be getting an email when a recurring invoice is sent out, which is helpful. So what is a recurring invoice, by the way? So if you have a client or a customer that you are billing the same amount every month, then it's basically going to send you an email every time you send that recurring invoice out. Um, also, there's a way that people can comment on the invoice, and so if there is a comment, you would get a notification. I would say you want to leave that on. There's not a lot of commenting usually on invoices, so you want to make sure that you see those. Um, also, if you would like to be able to see your online payments when they are received, you would want to leave that on. One thing about that is if you have a lot of print transactions that are happening day by day, week by week, you probably don't want to turn that on because that could be very problematic and kind of a nuisance. The other ones that are selected is that if we have a comment added to an estimate or proposal. Now, this video, we won't really go into that, what those really are, but obviously like a proposal, if that fits your business where you do need to send a proposal to someone to, and then get their feedback on the proposal. Um, but if you don't even do this in your business, you would just leave that unchecked. And then lastly on projects, um, I would definitely advise that you have these checked. Um, for comments and also posts that are made on different projects. So that is tip number one, just to go into your business and your logo and theme and your email notification. So sort of like three parts to tip one, I will say. Um, the next place you wanna go, tip number two, is you wanna set up your banking connections. And so this is a place, this is the screen that you're going to see. This is very important that you set up your bank connections as soon as you get your FreshBooks account set up. What these connections are is what it looks like, right? There are whatever your bank is or your credit card accounts, you wanna set up all of those accounts with your FreshBooks account. One note, this is something that I see very, very commonly is, especially of those, for those of you that are starting out in business and you don't yet have a business account that's separate from your personal account, what you want to do is ask yourself this question. Is the account that I'm about to set up primarily used for business or is it primarily used for personal? If it's primarily used for personal, do not set it up with your FreshBooks account because what happens is it causes you to have to do a lot of work 
to basically code all of those transactions to not be business. And if you hire work to a bookkeeper, it really creates a lot of chaos in their, the way that they work. So really before you ask yourself that question, best case scenario is go ahead and have a bank account and credit card set up in the business name. If you haven't yet done that, only set up accounts that are primarily used for business, even if they are quote unquote under your personal name. So that's tip number two. All right, so tip number three is going to your online payment area. And so if you click on the gear icon, you're gonna go into settings and then a little bit further from settings, you're gonna select online payments settings. So in FreshBooks, FreshBooks offers you three different payment options. And let's talk about first, what are payment options or what are payment processors? So payment processors are the companies that basically move the funds from your client's account into your account. So let's say for example that you do landscaping services and you send an invoice to your client. That client is gonna be able to see the invoice in their email and be able to select from a variety of options on how to pay, right? Just like if you go to like a website and you see Apple Pay, um, Shopify Pay, you know, Visa, MasterCard, all these different ways that you can pay. That's really what this part is about, is it's about how do you want to set up your online payment or what processor do you want to use for your online payment? So a couple of tips. If you are a new business owner and you don't yet have a payment processor account set up, then I would advise that you set up FreshBooks Payments. And let me tell you why. FreshBooks Payments is really about the same as far as their fees of, like compared to other payment processors. The other nice thing that you get with FreshBooks Payments is if you click over to All Transactions, it says see all of your online payments in transit at a glance. So for example, if you have three landscaping clients that you have submitted the invoice to them, and they've paid you, but you don't have the money in your bank account yet, you can go to the all transactions area and be able to see when those payments are estimated to hit your bank account. So that's really nice in case you need to make payroll, right? So that's really one option. Now, you have two other options for collecting payments, and those are gonna be at the bottom. You have Stripe and you have PayPal. So Stripe and PayPal, again, if you already have accounts with Stripe or PayPal, then go ahead and set up your account with FreshBooks and that will allow those invoices to get paid through those payment processors. Now, one thing I want to show you is that when you set up the payment, this is kind of another extra tip, um, when you set up these uh, payment processors, they're going to show you a certain fee uh, percentage for credit cards. Um, which is 2.9% and 30 cents, or the Amex is 3.5%, and they also charge 1% for an ACH bank transfer. Now at the bottom, if you go down to Stripe, you're going to see that it's pretty much the same, 30 cents plus 2.9%. Now it is, the Amex is 2.9% with Stripe, it's a little bit higher with FreshBooks payments. And then PayPal, they don't even tell you on this screen what their, what their charges are. As a bookkeeping firm, I would say that I tend to like Stripe and FreshBooks payments as far as matching them and making sure that everything's accurate. PayPal can be a little bit more uh, difficult to work with, so I would kind of steer you away from PayPal if you don't yet have an account. But if you have a PayPal account, then go ahead and use it. Tip number four is to set up your items and your services. And let me chat about that for just a second. Clicking on settings, you're going to go to items and services. So for my bookkeeping firm, I'm just using these as an example to show you, I would have these items and services. I would have bookkeeping services. We also have payroll services. We have a course, actually I'll tell you about that later, called Simply Profitable. And then we have custom back office setups that we do with clients. So these are the services that I offer through my business here at Simplified Partners. So you wanna do the same thing for your business. What are the services that you are currently offering your customers? And you wanna set up those services. So for example, bookkeeping services, 
when you click on, you're able to set the rate and you can add tax or not add tax. You also have the option to add inventory for that particular item and everything looks pretty much the same. So when you click the drop down, you can either select an item or you can select a service. If you are a service-based business, you can pretty much pick item or service and it's gonna act exactly the same. So you wanna go ahead and set these up. Don't feel like you have to set a price. You might have different prices that you charge. What you can do is this is just gonna set the default price that will show up on an invoice, but you can always edit that price later. But you definitely wanna set this up now because when you start to invoice your customers, it's gonna make it so much easier. And the last tip that I have for you today is to add your first project. So let me share with you a little bit about projects. So if you click on clients, you're gonna see this screen. And let's click on Joe Smith. Joe Smith is one of our customers with XYZ Landscaping Company. So one of the nice features with, with FreshBooks is that you have an option for projects. And projects are basically a way for you to be able to see a lot of transactions related to a particular project. So let's say, for example, that we have Joe and he works with XYZ Landscaping Company, but they have different locations that we service and we do mowing and mulching and all of those kinds of things. So as business owners, we might wanna know how profitable am I on this location in one town versus this other location we drive, you know, we have to travel to, how profitable are we based on these different locations? So what you could do is say that location is a project. So when you get into the bottom here, you scroll over and click on projects. And I have these set up just as an example. You have 1010 Elm Street, Knoxville Fifth Third Bank, and then Memphis Regions Bank, for example. So let's say that we do the landscaping at these three locations for this, for this customer. So what I'm able to do is then open this up and see some more information such as hours logged and profitability. So what you wanna do in this tip is you just wanna add a project. So if you have an existing client that you are doing multiple projects for or you service multiple locations, as in my example with landscaping, this is where you want to add that. So what you would do, again, let me scroll, go back and show you this, is you would go back to your client First of all, you wanna add your client if you haven't done that. So I've added Joe Smith. And then once you've added your client, then you wanna scroll over here to projects. And from here, you can create a new project. So create new project. And then you can go ahead and enter everyone that's gonna be part of that project. So if you have other people that are gonna have access to FreshBooks, then you can add them here add your project name, so on and so forth. So there you have it everybody, five tips for setting up your FreshBooks from scratch. One last thing to tell you about, we are so excited to be preparing for our very first digital course called Simply Profitable. So as a bookkeeping firm, we love working with our one-on-one -on -one clients, but we only have so many clients that we can take at any one moment. And so we are busy preparing for a new online course that you might be interested in. Again, it's called Simply Profitable, and it's an online course that you can take with me where we go through the setup of your FreshBooks account. We talk about basic bookkeeping, basic accounting principles, and I take you all the way through understanding how to read your financial statements and also some tasks that you wanna start performing on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis to make sure that your bookkeeping is accurate and also that you don't get behind and have to pay for a big cleanup job that you don't wanna to have to do. So if you want more information on our new course that launches early April 2023, click the link in the comments below and you can sign up to get on our wait list for our online course. And as always, I would love to hear from you. So please comment below. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.